Hey and welcome to a new and uh, again quite special video I would think. I actually never thought I would get this far in 2018 that I would make a video like this but you asked for it. So last week I made a video which was a response to the YouTube battle between Jace Two Cents and Gamers Nexus. So basically both of them were fighting over the Time Spy Extreme record in 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme and I decided to, ju uh, to jump into the battle and wanted to show you what I can actually achieve using a liquid nitrogen on the GPUs and on the CPUs. While the battle kind of escalated meanwhile, so Jace 2 cents decided to get a Kingpin container and also push his CPU, I think it was 5.5 GHz on the 7980XE, while he kept the VGAs on water cooling and I also sent a CPU container to Gamers Nexus to Steve. So I think it will be quite interesting. I, I'm really curious what he can do with this CPU and also with um, dry ice. What I also saw was that Chase 2 Sense um, mentioned that he was using or he wanted to use liquid metal for the CPU in dry ice. I just want to address this quickly. You should never use liquid metal below minus 10 degrees Celsius roughly because that's the point where it starts to solidify and if it solidifies it loses contact. Um, between the surfaces so it kind of loses contact between um, the heat spatter and the dye. The main reason for that is the shrinking while it solidifies and there is one more especially huge problem. Liquid metal is a metal alloy and metal alloys have a temperature dependent thermal conductivity. So it means the lower you go in temperature the less the thermal um, conductivity becomes and I tested that especially um, if you use uh, liquid nitrogen let's say minus 150 minus 160 degrees Celsius the thermal conductivity becomes really bad and the result with liquid metal is extremely bad like you could use the worst um, thermal compound you can find like a polymer tin it would still be better than liquid metal so for sub-zero applications never use liquid metal if you go below zero just change to something like thermal grizzly cryonaut so let's go finally back to today's topic and as you could see in the title it's about the dishwasher and you would probably think why the hell is he making a video about dishwashers but yeah so in the previous video where I was showing how I prepared my um, RTX 2080 Ti SLI rig um, I always showed how I prepare it for liquid nitrogen and how we protect the hardware from condensation. So whenever we go below room temperature you always face condensation. So whenever the hardware is below room temperature, you will have some condensation building up on the hardware itself. And we have to protect the hardware from this condensation. Ice itself is not really a problem because ice is not electrically conductive. So if we cool down the GPU to let's say minus 70 degrees Celsius with dry ice, everything around the GPU directly is not a problem. We don't even have to insulate the GPU itself because it's so cold and there's only ice, there will be no water. So condensation is not a problem. But when we go to the area of the VRMs, the VRMs are getting warm due to the load. They're not getting really hot, even like this. We always use them naked, just put a fan in front of it. For extreme overclocking, that's totally fine. Um, but we have the problem that the VRMs are heating up. And if the ice is building up, you can imagine that there is some zone in between where we have, in the end, some condensation water. And we have to um, protect the hardware from this condensation water. Typically, nowadays, I use Vaseline, Vaseline for it. Previously, let's say four, five, six years ago, I always used plastic dip, liquid tape ideally. Liquid tape is really convenient to use because you just apply it over everything and you can peel it off in the end and the hardware will just look like new. But it takes a lot more time for the preparation because you have to leave it dry ideally maybe like three, four, six hours. And if you have a lot of hardware to test and you just want to do it quickly, you just use Vaseline. It's a lot more convenient. So the question was, how do you remove the Vaseline afterwards? Because it's really messy. Even now after touching it, I already have Vaseline on my hands and it's really annoying. Especially if, if you're doing overclocking, like you prep, prepare something, then you move back to the keyboard. Essentially, you have Vaseline everywhere. You have it on the keyboard, on the mouse, on the screen, whatever. It's, yeah, it's really a pain in the ass. Uh, okay, so how do we get rid of the Vaseline? And I told you guys in the last video that I used the dishwasher and a lot of people lost their mind like how can you put hardware in the dishwasher? And I can tell you it's absolutely fine. We could soak this card completely in water, it would survive. It's not a problem as long nothing is turned on, as long as this is not connected to power, the dishwasher is not a problem. So to prepare it for the dishwasher basically we have to remove all unnecessary components VGA is already like this. That's the way we use it for extreme overclocking applications. So we have nothing to prepare on the VGA. 
For the mainboard it looks a little bit different. This is Maximus 10 Apex. I have been using this for quite a while now and um, this had so many extreme overclocking sessions, still works absolutely fine. As you can see also this one was prepared for extreme overclocking so all the unnecessary heat sinks are removed. Even uh, the PCH heat sink is removed and a lot of people always ask me, hey, why do you run the PCH naked? And the PCH has only a very low power consumption, so typically something between 3 and 5 watt. And this amount of heat can easily be dissipated through the PCB, so it's not an issue running the PCH without heatsink. Even if you just do ambient testing, it's fine, you don't need a PCH cooler. Same goes for the VRM, especially if we do XOC, let's say with liquid nitrogen, if we cool down to minus 150, even minus 180, which is absolutely possible with this platform. So C170, C270, C370, C390, all of them can run full pot so we can cool down the CPUs completely to let's say minus 180 degrees which is to be a typical temperature with liquid nitrogen and then we have a lot of heat dissipated through the PCB through the socket to the CPU to the cooler eventually and so we don't have to use VRM heat sinks which also makes it e a lot easier for us for debugging especially after we heat it up there would be so much water and ice underneath the heat sink we would have to remove it anyway to dry the board afterwards so it's just more convenient to use the board without heat sinks. If we put main boards in the dishwasher, the only thing you have to keep in mind, it's like really, really important, take out the BIOS battery, make sure it's completely discharged. So just hold on the power button for a little and then it's totally fine. Also make sure that you use a socket cover. I still have to do that. Um, I'm, not a, I'm really not a dishwasher expert here, but I think some of the water um, jets that are coming out might be a little bit aggressive, a little bit heavy, and I'm not sure how healthy it is for the socket if like one water jet goes into the socket. So we rather protect it with a socket cap and then it should be fine. Also don't put a CPU in the socket. You can theoretically do that. A CPU can also run. You can also put it in the water. It's, it's not really an issue. The problem is if the CPU is not deleted and if the lid is still stock, there is a tiny gap between the PCB and the IHS. And there is yeah, the possibility that some water goes through and inside the CPU. And if you would power it on afterwards, I'm not so sure if that's quite good. So if it's a deleted CPU, if the lid is loose, it's okay. You can put it in the socket, just disassemble the CPU afterwards and also properly dry it and then it should be fine. But I would prefer and I would advise to use a socket cover instead. It's a lot easier. To round things up, we will just also put one memory stick into the dishwasher because it's the same thing. Also, memory not really a problem. This one um, has a little bit of Vaseline on it. It has been used plenty of times so or there's not that much Vaseline left anymore. But um, I still want to make sure it's properly and clean. Afterwards, when we are done with everything, we will just assemble exactly this rig with this main board. We will put a CPU in the socket, this memory stick and the EVGA 1080. And I will show you that everything still works. So yeah, let's go to my kitchen. Okay, here we are. I actually never expected to sit in my kitchen and do a video with you guys, but that's how it goes with the extreme overclocking. You know, it's unusual methods, but whatever works. So take the main board. As you can see, I put on the socket cover, also remove the battery. I would like to actually put the board like this inside the bottom part of the dishwasher, but it would collide with the rotating thing from the top with this. So that's why I cannot do that. That's why I just put it in to the top. That's fine. A uh, memory stick, it's pretty much like a knife or like a fork, so just put it in here. And the VGA you can really just treat like a plate, put it in here, so it's safely secured, that's it. You can close the dishwasher, one more thing I would like to mention, I'm not adding anything to it, like no cleanance or, I'm not sure how this is called in English, but you just don't add anything, you just want to have the pure water clear uh, cleaning the board and the VGA basically Vaseline melts at a fairly low temperature so the hot water should just rinse it off that's the way we do it so we close the dishwasher press start and we'll be back in like one hour so let's do a quick check in between so most of the Vaseline is already gone I opened it um, once in between um, just to turn it around once. Looks quite alright so far. I think the memory stick, yeah, memory stick is almost perfectly clean already. And the VGA. Yeah, there's still some Vaseline on the VRM side, but like around the memories, GPU, 
Everything is removed already, so just put it back. Give it one more hour, it should be fine. So I did two runs now, so the mainboard and GPU and memory stick spent almost five hours in the dishwasher now. Looks really nice and clean. It's a little bit wet still, but we will fix that in a minute. So the mainboard looks fine. Also, same goes to the VGA, so even the VRMs are now fine. There's no Vaseline residues anymore. What's really important is now to get rid of the water that's underneath the VGA. So we have the GPU here, and if I just blow inside here, you can see that some of the water is coming out underneath the GPU. So a lot of water is stuck underneath the GPU, also underneath the memory ICs. So we have to heat this up, and for that we just take a normal hairdryer. So I will heat up the hardware like four, five, six times, let it cool down, uh, heat it up again, and um, then we will let it dry overnight, and tomorrow we will assemble the system again. So everything dried overnight, and I also checked it, everything looks really nice and clean, mainboard, GPU, memory sticks, I cannot find any residues of the Vaseline anymore, so that's very good news, after being in the dishwasher for almost five hours total, I think. So one more thing I would like to mention is, of course, because there is water, or there was water on the hardware, and at some certain spots the water dries, so you, you get some residues of the drying water, which you can remove by just using some kind of contact cleaner or electronic cleaner. Um, that's what you can use to remove all the residues from the water. I also recommend to clean all the contact fingers, for example, of the memory sticks or of the GPU, so all the PCI Express connectors, everything you should maybe clean afterwards in addition with an electronic cleaner. You can also use the electronic cleaner to spray it directly in the socket or even in the memory slots or in the PCI Express slot. Just make sure that everything is very dry afterwards, then this is really not a problem. That's what I also use, for example, if I get thermal paste into the socket, you just use an electronic cleaner spray and spray it until it's gone. Just make sure everything is nice and dry, and then that's not an issue. I also already tested the hardware, so first of all, plugged in uh, the just a 24-pin connector into the board to see if the standby voltage is up, which you can immediately see by the RGB LEDs lighting up. Then I went into Windows, checked if the CPU was detected properly, if the memory stick was detected properly, everything was there. Checked if GPU um, was detected as well, so run some GPU Z render test, and I saw that everything was detected properly, everything was running fine. So as you can see, you can put hardware in the dishwasher. Even though I would like to mention that this is an extreme case, an extreme method of cleaning. That's what we use for extreme overclocking if we want to get rid of the Vaseline. Most of the components we used we use are often samples, they don't, they're not covered by warranty, so we treat them of course differently. Of course, if you get your hardware in the shop and for example you have your warranty stickers on there, they will most likely be removed in the dishwasher and I'm not sure if the manufacturer sees some residues of water drops on your board if they will still cover warranties. And I would really like to point out that of course there's always the possibility that something goes wrong. In my case it always worked. I know a lot of extreme overclockers who use this method to clean their hardware. I never heard of a case where it actually damaged hardware, but I think there's always a possibility that something goes wrong. So always be aware that there is a certain risk left. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was maybe a bit more extreme and very unusual video, but that's what you're here for on my channel, I guess. If you have more ideas like this or any feedback questions about the dishwasher, put it down in the comments below. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. See you soon.